Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Prolock number ELP-100-DU. So the ELP-110 is an in-swinging latch guard. It is, in the world of latch guards, there's lots. In the world of in-swinging door latch guards versus out-swinging door latch guards, there's not lots. There's really only, well, there's not, you know, there's pretty much only this sort of two-piece system that is available in uh, generally two sizes, uh, roughly speaking 12-inch, as is the ELP-110, and then there's like a 6-inch model. Obviously, a 12-inch model is going to be used in those instances where you have um, two locks, or you just want a longer one, but if you have a lock and a deadbolt, you wouldn't use the 6-inch version. You're going to use the longer 12-inch version. And the shorter one may be an ELP-106. Let me check that for you so that we know. Yes, it will... Mm. That would be an ELP-100 uh, interlocking latch protector, which is a 7-inch. A 100 is a 7-inch, a 110 is a 12-inch. 107, 112, probably would have called it that. Um, different finishes. Obviously, the DU is a dark brown. I would say that this is going to be a powder-coated finish over steel, which it is. Weighs about 0.9 pound. At least it does with its fasteners and its packaging. Uh, brass finish. You can do a chrome finish. And that is it. Brass, chrome, or dark bronze. Those are the three finishes on those two different lengths. Now, this design from Prolock was not always unique in the world because there was another company by the name of MAG who had an identical item or close to identical and I don't know the relationship between Prolock and MAG the fact that this is so much like the old MAG product there might be more to that story there is another competitor that makes a in-swinging latch protector but it's a different design and some people want the the dual U-shaped design for a specific purpose that is because you've got the channel that's going to mount to the door You'll notice one piece has the holes in the back side of it. Okay. Um, you'll notice the other piece has holes through the unit itself. That means when these, when the piece that mounts um, to the frame. And the piece that mounts to the face of the door, when the door is brought to the frame, that interlocking scenario utterly cuts off access to the head of the screws. Period. End of sentence. The competitor's model doesn't do that, even though I've installed the other model, and with the one-way screws that they have on the frame portion, take it from me, if you put it in the wrong place, those screws are not coming out. Um, but there are people who want this, who, who demand this sort of model, and I don't disagree. I would sure personally want a model that if this is going to be my frame portion, that when the door is brought up to it, you can no longer even get access to the head of the screw that's going to be down here. That's really, that's, that's going to deter people. Back when the boom of condos was continuing on in the West Loop area of Chicago in the 80s and the 90s, break-ins were rampant because construction was such that a thief would manipulate the opening of the door in such a way that they could easily open the door. An interlocking latch guard would have prevented that sort of attack because, you know, you obviously can't, can't force the door and frame apart from each other. These interlock. So not only will it keep you from tr attempting to manipulate the latch bolts, you can't even spread that frame you can't bow the frame to then just simply push the door open. You're not, you're not going to do it. You're going to look for something easier would be 
uh, I think what the common thought is. The back of the packaging has the installation instructions. And I'd like to go over that uh, at this time. So those installation instructions, um, you know, it's not, it's not, these are not difficult to install. And if you're a locksmith, not that it's easy money, but it doesn't, doesn't require a significant um, skill level. For homeowners, would I hire someone to do this? I wouldn't. Uh, I personally wouldn't. However, I'm a fan of always hiring a locksmith, always. So there are two different pieces. They're easily identified. Screw holes in the back, screw holes through the unit. The ones that go through the unit, that's the frame side. So what you're going to do is you're going to get the, well, let's go to the according to the installation instructions. And by the way, completely symmetrical, completely reversible. Doesn't matter. As long as you have an in-swing door, this will, I, I don't see why this won't work. Unless you have some sort of a har hardware conflict. Um, I don't see why you'd have a problem. Um, place the frame side channel, part with the large screw holes on the edge of the door strip, centered with the lock. Mark the location of the screw holes and drill eighth of an inch pilot holes. Install using the long screws provided. You have some short ones and you have some long ones. Now what they've not told you is where to place that on the door. You need to account for the fact that the thickness of this material is going to be placed on the face of the door. 12 inch width of the piece on the door, half inch, projection, about 9 sixteenths. Thickness of the material, 0 .080, 0 .080, so more than a sixteenth. A sixteenth plus um, a 48th or a 54th, whatever. Heavy on a sixteenth. Um, Obviously going to be the same for the other item, but let's check it. 12 inch, overall width from the edge of the frame, 7 sixteenths. Overall projection, not 11 sixteenths. You have to get the door in the closed position, but you have to locate the frame portion with the door portion temporarily on the face of the door so that when you have the two pieces nest, you can actually get the door pulled and latched. So that's, that would be a rookie mistake, and following those installation instructions um, precisely would lead you into that type of scenario. Place the door channel side inside the frame channel. Set a piece of foam to hold the two parts in place, the foam that's included, by the way. With your hand, close the door, and using a pencil, mark the, mark the door at the top of the channel. So they're saying apply this, stuff the two pieces together, basically, you know, however you're going to do that, doesn't really matter. Locate the frame on there, and I think I see where they're going with this. Hmm. Okay, this is a pretty smart piece of tech. Here's the bottom line. The fox has been outfoxed. The leg of each is not the same. You can literally apply this to the frame and push it up to the face of the door or to the edge of the door stop, which would be where the door stops. And because that leg is shorter, you don't have to worry about that space for that. That's great. That's really great thinking. Uh, use the foam to hold it all together. Place that on the door. Mark the top of this. Close the door. Mark the holes. Pre-drill everything, open the door, you've got your screw holes marked, drill a 332nd of an inch pilot hole and start using the short screws. Tip, install each side using one screw and check that the parts line up correctly and that the door closes properly before drilling and installing the rest of the screws. Um, and. Uh, Okay, so there's then a, uh, an unrelated tip. I was uh, unaware that they had that very smart design to that. So definitely be mindful that that short leg is supposed to be on the outside. That's really great. 
let's take a look. We knew that this size was 11 16 The short size side, you know, that's going to be uh, 5 8 But it's a little shy on that, which happens to be a 16th plus a little shy, the thickness of that material. Bully for you guys, Prolock. I love it. Uh, very effective at keeping honest people honest in the sense of latch protectors. Um, if you're in a condo building, you'll probably want to check with the condo board before you slap it on. You don't want to run afoul of the mandate or the, do the condo documents regarding what can and cannot be done. Um, generally, what can happen as well is a couple of people will want to do it because there might be a break-in. And then there's a meeting with the condo board and they decide to permit everyone to do it. That would be a good position to be in as well. Even though it certainly serves to make the door look a little more commercial, certainly is going to significantly increase the potential for um, uh, decrease the potential for theft. Those longer screws, those are three inch. The reason those are so long is that you want to sink them through the stop, through the jam, into the stud behind there absolutely pre-drill the hole properly. Basically, and I forget my education, but I think the drill bit you want to be is like 80% of the root depth or the root thickness of the screw. Generally, I was taught just match your screw, your drill bit up with the diameter, the, the true di solid diameter of the screw, but I think technically it's supposed to be about 8 tenths of that. Absolutely pre-drill that, and when you're running the screws in, have the perfect fitting um, driver bit. And if you're getting to a point where you're going to slip, stop. Pull it out. Go one wire size drill bit larger. And then get that so that you can run the screw in without splitting anything and get it sunk deep into the stud that's there because that's going to do the work of keeping it all secure. The shorter screws. They appear to be about an inch and a quarter. Indeed, inch and a quarter is what they are. Um, so if you have an inch and three eighths or an inch and three quarter door, I think you'll be okay with that. And then finally, there is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the ProLock products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog. Now, I'm a fan of ProLock, and it's because primarily they have a relatively comprehensive solution of security hardware. Especially, not only latch protectors, that's fairly garden variety, um, but they have a nice offering of sliding door locks. They have maybe a half a dozen options when it comes to sliding door locks. So the link below this video to their manufacturer's page in our site You'll come up with the product catalog. That's actually not the one you want. You want the one that's called Entry Armor Catalog. ProLock is a manufacturer of locksmithing tools, and if you look at the product catalog, that's what it'll get you. If you're a locksmith, you're very familiar with their tool. If you're not, suffice it to say they make a particular tool that they're quite famous for. That is an absolute industry standard piece of equipment. But the Entry Armor Catalog will allow you to review all of that material. If you're familiar with MAG products, there's a cross-reference chart on that page as well. If you have any questions on the ProLock, this is their part number ELP-110-DU, in-swinging latch protector, or any other ProLock product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.